I took these floral decals and placed them along the side of the door frame. I cut the decal and repositioned it. I continued up along the door frame, making sure to wrap the flowers. I added a few leaf decals sparingly. Head to Dollar Tree and pick up three glass carafes. Take twine and wrap, tie, and secure around the glass and clip parts of the plant off. Add water to the glass bottles and then add clippings to the water. Hang a curtain rod and add more twine or rope from the rod. I'm gonna go right down the center and just cut them in half so that I have that flat edge to go flush against the board. Space the noodles out with a little bit of spacing in between and then attach them also with the staple gun for some added stability. I worked in sections of about four at a time, sprayed a little bit of spray adhesive on, and then just kind of used my hands to firmly work the leather into the channels. I trimmed the edge at the corner and then just tucked it over and secured it tightly with a little bit of spray adhesive and then also more of the staple. Once that corner was secure, I just worked my way down. I printed a deer design from my computer and traced it on a clear Ziploc bag. I cut a square hole in the cardboard box using a utility knife. Next, I taped the Ziploc bag design over the hole. Then, I placed the box in front of the wall. I turned my cell phone light on. I put it inside of the box at the opposite end as the design and I closed the lid. Put covers over the windows. I traced the design on the wall using a pencil. Once I was done, I turned the lights back on and was ready to paint. I was careful to work from top down and left to right. So so I didn't smudge the wet paint. When it was completely dry, I removed the remaining pencil marks with an eraser and damp rag. I fell in love with this beautiful floral fabric. We measured the wall to make sure we purchased enough. We knew we needed three panels, so we had them cut accordingly. We started in the corner and used a staple gun to secure the fabric in place. After that, we used spray adhesive to ensure the fabric was well secured. Before drying starts, gently smooth out all air bubbles. Don't forget to overlap about an inch with each panel for a smooth transition and line up your patterns as best you can. Once all panels are hung, smooth and staple along the bottom about a quarter of an inch above your baseboard. Using an X-Acto knife, cut fabric starting in the top corner going down. This will help to make sure the fabric does not stretch or tear. Place your knife between the baseboard and a credit card to help you make the perfect straight line. Gently cut around any outlets I think you'll be amazed at what you can create using discarded furniture. I took some bamboo sticks, which I had purchased from Amazon, and I measured the length of the front of the drawer. I cut the bamboo sticks to this length, decided that I was going to remove and discard the top drawer. I removed the old doorknobs from the remaining drawers, and then I sanded them down lightly. I spaced out my bamboo sticks, and then I applied them simply using liquid nails. I took the drawers and the cabinets outside, and I spray painted them. While I was outside, I also cut a thin piece of plywood so that it would replace where that top drawer was that I had removed. I simply slid this into place and continued painting the entire nightstand. I added new poles, which I had purchased online as well. Do you have one of those dorm style door mirrors? Let's give it an update. Tape off the mirror with paper and spray paint the wood frame. Remove any spray paint from the mirror that might have gotten onto the glass and then clean with some glass cleaner. Measure and cut some rattan webbing. Spray one side of each rattan piece with spray adhesive. Place and press the rattan pieces onto each end of the glass on the mirror and place some heavy books on top for a couple of hours some cardboard, brace out a hexagon. Then what I did was I used a sharp knife to cut out the cardboard. Next, I grabbed an old foam pad I had and also used the exact same template and cut it out. I used some regular old wood glue, put it down on the cardboard and then glued the foam to it. We're gonna lay the fabric out and what you'll do is turn it around and just grab a stapler and it holds it in place just like that. But what you get on the other side is you get your hexagon covered in fabric. It took all the hexagons and on the back and used a paint stick and stapled through them to hold them together. 
some pegboard hooks and shelves from your local dollar store and buy some inexpensive pegboards. Do you have leftover peel and stick wallpaper? Lay your wallpaper face down on a table and position the pegboards on the paper with a few inches of space between each pegboard. Outline each pegboard with a pencil and cut out each piece of wallpaper, including an additional inch outside the outline. Cut out the corners of the wallpaper. Peel the backing off the wallpaper and lay the pegboard face down on the sticky side of the paper. Press down firmly, wrap the outer edges of the wallpaper up and over the side edges of the pegboard. Take a screwdriver, pencil, or other poker type object and poke holes through the wallpaper and into the pegboard holes. Hang the pegboard with the hardware provided so it is secure on the wall. Line up with the wallpaper pattern on your wall with the covered pegboard. Insert the pegboard hooks into the wallpapered pegboard to hold your keys. I hit the hardware store and picked up some 2x2s and some 3 quarter inch plywood. I measured and cut the 2x2s to the height of the headboard that I ultimately wanted to have. Once my frame was built, I added my plywood pieces on top. I screwed these pieces of wood into place. My next step was to cover it the way I wanted it to look. My solution was actually to purchase a 5x7 foot jute rug online. The price of this rug was only $62. Place the rug around it and started to staple it into place. I'm going to give the surface of the cabinet a quick sanding. I'm going to paint the cabinet with some creamy white chalk paint. I'm going to brush on a layer of decoupage glue and then lay on my paper. So I'm going to use my hands to flatten it out. I want to slice off the rest of the paper and want to give it one final coat of the decoupage glue. I can use a sanding block to gently take off any excess. I want to also remove the paper from those. I'm going to finish it all off with a coat of wax. I wanted to create a dimensional wood wall. I decided to use wood shims. I stained the wood shims using a water-based stain. I stained the shims in varying degrees, some with just one light coat and others with up to seven coats to make them nice and dark. I started attaching the stained wood shims to the wall using construction adhesive. I found it best to first place the long pieces in a random pattern on the wall and then overlay these with the shorter pieces. This way, I was building up the wall dimensionally as well as varying the color throughout. There were some gaps between the pieces and so I had to cover these with smaller pieces at the end. When it came to the light switch on the wall, I just worked right up to the switch. I am going to show you how to make three high-end looking headboards using supplies from Dollar Tree. You're going to start by flipping it over so the white side is facing down. On the back, I am using two paint sticks and I'm going to hot glue them over the creases. I grabbed a really lightweight towel so I've ironed out all the creases, laying it flat on my table, and I'm going to put the piece of cardboard over the top and then just fold it around the sides and hot glue it in place. This is a really beautiful kind of beachy look. This next headboard uses peel and stick wallpaper tiles from Dollar Tree. And I laid them all out again on that trifold board, made sure that the patterns matched up. To finish off the edges, I am just folding that wallpaper over. Hang these up on a wall with some command strips and you've got a really stunning kind of modern looking headboard. Dollar Tree has these rolls of shelf liner. So starting with a trifold board as a base, I am just going to unroll onto the cardboard. You want to line up all these flowers so it looks like one continuous piece. For the back of this one, I am going to fold the remaining adhesive over the back so the edges look nice and finished. This is really easy to hang with command strips on a wall. 